Hi booktube, I'm coming to you, to you tonight with my maybe midrash uh, wrap up. I'm in a new filming location in my living room and I wanted to give you just a brief summary of the books that I read for uh, the May readathon, maybe midrash, uh, which is still I guess taking place for another few days. But basically this uh, readathon, you were challenged to read books that focused on religion, uh, whether that was fiction or nonfiction in some form. And the main challenge for this readathon was to read one fiction book and one nonfiction book that had to do with religion. And so I read one fiction book and two nonfiction books for this particular readathon. And I have already talked about the fiction book in a previous video, uh, so I'm not going to discuss that much, that one much here. But I wanted to give you a brief summary of these books and sort of just sum up what I thought of them and what I read for this readathon. So we'll start with the fiction book that I've already talked about um, in a more detailed video. I will link that in the description box down below. But that was Judas by Amos Oz, and this follows our character of Shmiel uh, in Jerusalem in 1959, and he is a biblical scholar. And at one point he is tired of the academic life and he takes a, care ta takes a job as a caretaker for an older gentleman named Gershom Wald. And while he is living with Gershom Wald in this old house and taking care of him, he also meets uh, another boarder in that house uh, who is a woman named Atelia. And she and Shmiel sort of have this I, I, I'm not sure what their relationship even is. He's definitely attracted to her. And she kind of toys with him. Um, but anyway, it's it follows these three characters as they're put together into this, this house. And it's a coming-of-age story, definitely, for Shabelle in particular. As he figures out you know, what it is that he wants to do with his life. There's a lot of uh, biblical commentary... Um, especially about the uh, Bible story that focuses on Judas. And, uh, yeah, it's just almost a character study, really, of these three people and their interactions as they're put together in this house um, and how uh, Gershom and Attilia are connected and then Attilia's relationship with Shmiel and Shmiel's relationship with Gershom and... So I, I enjoyed this overall. It wasn't, you know, my favorite book ever, but I did really like it. Um, I especially enjoyed the commentary that focused on uh, the religious aspects um, related to Judas. And that part was actually more interesting to me, really, than Shmiel's story with the other two uh, characters in this book. Um, so that, I guess that just kind of shows who I am as a person, where I prefer the the historic religious aspects of this to the actual like coming of age story. Um, but overall, I did enjoy this. I think I gave it four stars on Goodreads. My second read was uh, 95 Theses and Other Writings uh, by Martin Luther. And I have mentioned before on this channel that I was raised uh, Lutheran in the Evangelical Lutheran Church of America, which is the more liberal synod of Lutheranism as opposed to like the Missouri Synod. Um, we allow women to be pastors, um, we accept um, LGBTQIA people, uh, that sort of thing. Um, so we're a very inclusive church. That being said, <laughs> um, I now identify as an atheist. I don't go to church, um, but I still have a fascination with religion and especially with the figure of Martin Luther as he was sort of unknowingly and kind of against his will, the founder of Lutheranism. Um, he didn't want a religion named after him, but it happened. Uh, so anyway, this is a collection of his writings. It's by no means all of them. And so it has, of course, the 95 Theses in it, uh, which I had read some of them in the past, but I hadn't read all of them. It also has his eight sermons um, that he gave during Lent uh, when he was hiding out in uh, Wittenberg after the Diet of Worms um, and various other writings of 
that nature. Uh, and I, I can't really like go into detail about this because there is just so many different writings and some of them I liked better than others. Some of them were pretty lengthy. But he talks about a lot of the usual themes. You know, the, the 95 Theses were created because Luther was upset about the selling of indulgences in the Catholic Church, uh, where if you uh, bought an indulgence, it would get you or your loved one uh, less time in purgatory. And then, of course, he also talks about his dislike of images, or um, not images, but like idols and images in the church, and various other uh, things like that. Um, and he also chews out the people who are upset when he is in hiding, um, and they're rioting about what is happening with the church. Um, and so there's all those different writings in here. It's it's interesting. Like I said, I like some of them better than others. Some of them were more interesting to me than others. Uh, but overall, I feel like I learned more about Luther. And I read some of his works that I've heard about, like been reading biographies of him. But I hadn't read the actual physical text of. Um, so that was helpful. I especially enjoyed reading the 95 Theses because, like I said, I had read some of them, but I hadn't read every single one and wasn't familiar with all of them. And I feel like as a former Lutheran, that is something that you definitely really should know. Um, and I mean, I knew that what they were re related to with the indulgences, but not necessarily, you know, every single one of them, what they said. And so, yeah, I enjoyed this. I think I gave it three stars. And I would recommend it if you're interested in more of the tenets that make up Martin Luther's, uh, or, or what's that word, oeuvre of works. Um, and then the last one I read was a little bit of a different type of book in regards to religion, and that is Standing in the Light, My Life as a Pantheist by Sherman Apt Russell. And this book focuses on pantheism. And pantheism is basically a religion-ish uh, that is mostly about nature. Um, you are very like attuned with nature, and nature is sort of where you find that spiritual sense that other people find in a church, right? Um, you don't necessarily believe in a god figure. Um, nature is sort of the substitute for that, uh, for lack of a better way of putting it. So in this book, Sherman Aft Russell uh, combines nature writing with talk of philosophy, the Stoics, uh, the Transcendentalists. She talks about Walden, um, various other individuals. And then she also combines aspects of her own life, such as death, her children leaving the house to go to college and being an empty nester. She also talks about spending a summer, I think it was, as a bird bander. Um, she lives in New Mexico, and she helps some friends of hers with banding birds so they can keep track of them and their uh, migration patterns and whatnot. So this was really interesting. This was probably my favorite of the three books that I read for Maybe Midrash. Because I really enjoyed just every aspect of it, uh, from the nature writing to her focus on uh, the Stoics and philosophy, and then how all of those things combined. You know, she's she's using examples from her personal life, like the bird banding and death, and her kids growing up and leaving home, uh, and combining that with you know what happens with nature and what philosophy says and. Yeah, this was just really good. I really enjoyed it. I've actually met Charmin. Um, she came to my university when I was an undergrad as a visiting writer. And then she's also friends with one of my professors. Um, that was one of my creative writing professors. They work together at Antioch in LA. And so I feel like I sort of have something of a personal connection to Charmin, even though I don't know her super well. But, like I said, this was probably my favorite of the books that I read for maybe Midrash, and I think I gave it four stars on Goodreads, something like that. Uh, but I would highly recommend this. This came out quite a while ago, but it is a really good read if you can find a copy of it. It came out in 2008.
So it's over 10 years old, but it, it's still a really good good book to read, especially if you're interested in pantheism and you like nature writing combined with like philosophy. Uh, you'll really enjoy this. And Sharman is just really down to earth in her writing. You know, she's not pretentious or anything like that. And so, yeah, this was a very enjoyable book. And like I said, definitely my favorite of the three that I read. So that was my maybe Midrash Reads. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, please give it a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Um, let me know what you read for maybe Midrash, if you participated or any of your favorite books regarding religion, whether they are fiction or nonfiction. And I will talk to you again soon. Thank you, BookTube.